Then I set up a regular part-time private practice because I was involved with library work and other, other voluntary activities at that time. So I did part-time practice in my own home. I built a room. I didn't have a lot of equipment. Some of it was in, improvised. I did have a micro, microwave machine, which I got from England, but I had to do it through the local doctor because they didn't recognise that a physio should need one of those over here. Uh, they didn't really understand that a doctor doesn't use them anyway. So I got that and it's still operational. I use it on myself from time to time. And that was before you did your cooking with microwaves. But we had used them in the hospital and I was a great fan of them and I still think they're good. And I improvised traction and um, I'm a really great believer on self-help and a lot of the a lot of the treatment that I gave, I gave homework and they had to do it too because I didn't see that I had to do everything for them and that they would improve better if they did a lot of, um, of their work themselves at home. I made a lot of friends through the private practice. I, I tried not to charge too much because I just felt these people had enough of a problem and I didn't really need the money, although it was good pocket money. And we didn't have ACC then to start with, so there was no way of getting anything back. Could get back through the insurance companies if they did have medical insurance, but that was it. We were pretty anti-chiropractors, and I still am. I hear people say, nothing against the people who do it, but um, there's a, a friend of mine going to the chiropractor at present and she said, oh, I've been going to them for years and years and they do me a lot of good. Well, I just think if I haven't fixed somebody in six weeks, then I should pass them on to somebody else. I shouldn't keep a hold of them um, and have that sort of statement made about my work. So I just think we, we need to know when to send people on for further treatment to somebody with more skills. The, the next doctor I had was Dr. Devan, and he was a bit of a one-man band, he, but I really appreciated him. He was a very good doctor. He didn't care for sending people to specialists or anything like that, but he, he appreciated my work and uh, we got on really well and I, I was able to ring him whenever I needed help and then the next doctor was my own son-in-law and he used me a lot and we we had a, have and still have a good relationship and they've moved on he's one of these ones that have uh, the brain drain to australia but i don't blame blame them he wanted to do postgraduate work in emergency medicine and he couldn't get any locums to do the practical part so he had to go overseas and i think I don't know what the answer is to our medical system, but at the moment it's not as good as it was when I was practicing physiotherapy, I don't think. Yeah, as I say, I made a lot of friends. The children, when they were little, they used to sit on the couch with the patients and they still, I still contact quite a lot of those people that were my patients in those days. One of the rules of the Hippocratic Oath is first do no harm. So I don't think I have done any harm. I haven't broken any legs. I haven't burnt anybody. I may not have cured a lot of people, but you do your best. Mm -hmm.